Hi everybody, it's Garrick Taylor here on request to speak year-end spectacular. We'll look back at 2019, we'll look ahead to 2020. This is the show that everybody was waiting for all year. It's here. Joined by my panelists, she's always camera ready, from Elevate Strategies, Lorna Romero. Also to my left, from Compass Strategies, Jesse Arment. First time panelist, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. From First Strategic, Bob Charles. Bob, thanks for doing this. Pleasure. All right, I don't want a lot for Christmas, but all I want is you. So thank you all for oh, being here so for this year-end edition. And we so feel thank the same you. about you, Gary. <laughs> thank you. All right, let's look back at 2019. First, talk a little about the stories that defined the year. Doug Ducey has reshaped the state Supreme Court. Bill Montgomery is now a Supreme Court justice. To what extent do you think that these appointments will really define the Ducey legacy when, when he leaves office? Lorna, we'll start with you. I think shortly after he leaves office, this won't be the first thing people think of. I think it'll take a little bit more time for people to realize how transformational it was and how much of an impact it's going to be. I think it's going to take some pretty significant decisions by the court for people to reflect back on the impact that the governor had on it. But he has a number of wins that he's going to be able to tout after he finishes his final term. I do think it'll be listed, but I think he has other things that will be more on the forefront. Jesse, under Governor Ducey, the court expanded and he's really put his mark mm -hmm. on it. That's absolutely true. Um, the court expansion, got to give the legislature some credit for that, whether you think it's good or bad. I believe that was a Mesnard bill back in the day. The court is a conservative entity now in the state, for better or worse. Bob? For better, in the yeah. court. Yeah, no, look, you've got five of his picks, two of Brewers. That court is stacked when you've got big issues coming up, redistricting in the next yeah. year. You've got the ballot initiatives that continue to go before the Supreme Court. Uh, this court is going to play an imperative role in what the future of Arizona looks like. So to Lauren's point, uh, yeah, going forward, it's going to be more important than it is right now. Yeah, they're going to be busy, especially next year with all these things headed to the ballot. All right, another big issue in 2019. Uh, Kate Gallego, elected Phoenix mayor. How would you assess the tenure so far? How's she doing? Jesse, what do you think? I think she's doing great. I'm so proud to live in a city where Kate Gallego is our mayor. Uh, she's not, you know, been around in office for that long, so I think a lot of her big projects we're going to be seeing down the line, but uh, I love that she's investing in infrastructure, defending the light rail. I'm really proud to be a Phoenician. Fixed infrastructure uh, rail. Bob, I know you're a big <laughs> fan. <laughs> you could not find somebody more opposed to light rail than me. You couldn't. Uh, I live near it. I see it. I'm impacted by it daily. But before I get to that, she's a fantastic mayor. She's doing a great job. She, look, Phoenix, 42% Democrat, 32% Republican. She's a left-leaning mayor that's doing left-leaning projects for the city. Light rail aside, not a huge fan, fixed rail, that's can, you know, 1880s technology, but my expectations are that she's doing what she was elected to do, and she's doing a good job at it. Warner, what do you think about the Gallego tenure so far? I agree she's doing a, a great job. I think she's taken a pragmatic approach in this early phase of her tenure. There are some issues, though, before the council that have um, created quite a splash. I mean, we're in the middle of the Uber Lyft battle, them trying to increase a fee at the airport. And then also, I think it was unfortunate the city council decided to close their, their Mexico offices. So that's something that needs to be addressed, too. But I think in the aggregate, she's doing a really good job. And you always see her within the community and being involved in community events. And I think that's really important to the citizens of Phoenix to see their mayor being out and about and involved in projects that are important to them. By the time we post this, uh, we'll probably know the answer, but let's jump ahead to 2020. Do you think in January 2020 you'll be able to take Uber or Lyft to the airport? Yes, yes. I, I don't know why they wouldn't just pass the fee through to the consumer. Interestingly, taxis are not able to pass those fees through to the consumer, but Uber and Lyft can, and I think that their posturing right now is going to make them look a little silly. But as end. of this taping, Uber and Lyft say if this fee comes down, they're leaving. I think it's a giant question mark because as, as soon as the city council does what they did before and approve the fee it's going to be litigated so maybe they're going to continue to operate in january because there's going to be ongoing litigation but they've made it very clear the goldwater institute handful of others that they fully intend to sue what do you think we take an uber to the airport in january we are but with the tax added on okay it's going to be there let's wrap up 2019 when you think about 2019 what do you think of what news stories will define this year. I've got a few. I've got drought contingency. I've got the Aunt Becky scandal. The Democrats who are running for president. Beto and Kamala flame out. The governor and Nike, the economy, the squad, the asylum crisis, Greta Thunberg, <laughs> on and on and on. 
Anything that pops to mind? Lauren, we'll start with you. That's a great list. I think if we were not so engulfed in Trump impeachment and also um, every Democrat elected official deciding to run for president and jumping into the race, we would be more focused on a lot of the international issues that have happened this year. There's huge news that happened in Venezuela, Hong Kong, elsewhere. And it didn't get the attention, or it's not continuing to get the attention that it normally would because we're so consumed by D.C. politics right now. Um, so, unfortunately, I think the presidential dynamics and campaigns is what's dominated 2019. But I think when it comes to big news stories, things that are happening internationally, Brexit, for example, what a circus that is, those are actual real big news stories that just aren't getting the attention they deserve. So you're going a combo, Venezuela, Brexit, Hong Kong, the international stories that we didn't pay as much attention Correct. to. All right, Jesse, when you think of 2019, what news story will you think of? I mean, I think what we should think of, and we were talking about this off camera beforehand, was the gun violence issue, which yep. keeps rearing its head year after year. And the fact that that's not top of mind to us just goes to show how desensitized we've all become to this conversation. I think it's very reassuring that the spending bill looks to include some spending on gun violence research for the first time since 1996. We haven't funded this since before before Columbine happens. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Aside from that, I would say 2019 has been 2020 Eve, just from the national and from the legislative perspective here. Everyone is looking at what they are doing today through the lens of what's going to happen in 2020, both the elections and the census. We dealt with this big question about inclusion of the citizenship, citizenship question right. on the census and you know, there have been other efforts to manage voter turnout for 2020. Those issues, to me, seem to have loomed over all of 2019, getting ready for November 2020. Those are good lists. What do you think, Bob, when you think hey, of 2019? I wish it was the Area 51 raid that never came to be. <laughs> but since that's not what it is, I think look at Arizona. Look at how important a role we play now on the national stage. This state is, is definitely starting to teeter more towards the blue. Mm -hmm. And as a swing state that plays an important role in the presidential elections coming up, we're going to have candidates here that we haven't had paying attention to Arizona as much before. We're going to have Arizona at the forefront where Ducey, as we've already mentioned, has done a great job to make our state look great. But where are we going in 2020? Uh, I think that's going to be an important step, and I, I, everything that's happened in 2019, the impeachment process, all the presidential candidates, Arizona's going to be at the forefront. So your story of 2019 is a shifting Arizona. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. The right answer is the retirement of Will Hurd. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Will Hurd uh, is a congressman from South Texas, uh, one of the biggest congressional districts in the country. He is a talented guy, and he looked at Washington, and he threw up his hands, and he said, nuts to this, and that is lamentable. So I've made the Will Hurd retirement my story of 2019. <laughs> All right, those are some great uh, looks back at 2019. Tune in to our next video. We will, we will make predictions for 2020.